this is the reality is that so often, especially highly motivated individuals, we can very much feel that we have to check that box. We have to say that we woke up and we did our morning routine and we did our workout as part of our routine and that we went through our day in a very strategic, specific way. And then we have great sleep hygiene because we have a sleep routine as well. And we have, we can bog ourselves down. And so we have to ensure, we've talked about this before, Conscious Investor, that these routines, whatever we adopt, they are serving us, not enslaving us. Welcome back or welcome to the Conscious Investor Podcast. This is the show where we talk about health, mindset, and wealth building strategies. I'm recording this and it's just past Labor Day weekend. So Labor Day weekend is officially over. Pumpkin spice, everything is now officially on the shelves everywhere. And kids of all ages, including our young adults off at college, everyone is back in school, which is the very reason why I think it's so important that we circle back to the concept of routines. And that's why this episode is called Finding Rest in Routines. And in this episode, I'm going to talk about three key areas where we can create rest through our routines. We're going to talk about the difference between um, the nuances of our routines because that's so important. The very last one is going to be probably a game changer for a lot of you. And I'm going to share some experiences of mine along the way. And I think that it's going to serve and support you. Before we dive on in, I just wanted to give a super huge shout out and thanks to Hercules 41272828 for leaving a rating and review over on Apple Podcasts. Hercules 41272828828, that's kind of fun to say, um, says, love listening to Julie over the past year. I'm a young generation Z and aspiring investor. Thank you so much. It truly means the world that you took time to leave a rating and review. And I love that, um, you know, this show, it reaches boomers, Xers such as myself. It's reaching millennials. And this is the first time I've known that it has reached someone in the Gen Z, which I'm raising a Gen Z and an alpha. And so I'm really excited that that's resonating with you also. Um, I also don't like best kept secrets. And this is why I wanted to let you know about directed IRA. Okay. Now the cool thing is, is that, um, anything I endorse on the show is something that I am choosing to endorse. And so I know that so many of you have looked for different ways of navigating your self-directed funds. You have maybe like Super Ed, Steve and I, we had some old 401ks and we had rolled those over years ago. And it turns out that we are paying quadruple the amount that we are paying now with directed IRA. With directed IRA, you can take control of your retirement and invest in what you know with a self-directed IRA. And so, like I said, Super Ad Steve and I recently swapped what they call custodians. Um, and that process was really simple. And so if you feel like, wow, I'm not sure about the services that my custodian is currently offering, or maybe I need to revisit, you know, the fees associated with the, the company that I am utilizing. Um, definitely take a moment, head on over to directedira.com. And if you'd like a personal introduction, I know so many of the staff there have become friends with them over the past year, and they're just phenomenal, um, very quick in their response time and and very quick to serve in very positive ways. I just love their attitude. I love um, how the team works, operates, and functions. And I'm so confident in saying, hey, this is a really great resource for you if you are looking at self-directing funds. If you use promo code CONSCIOUS99, you will have your first year covered for only $99. And then from there, it's not much more. And so take a moment, go check out Directed IRA. And again, if you'd like a personal introduction, then just reach out to me, shoot me an email. There's a link down in the show notes that will 
open up a variety of links where you can reach out and contact me directly. All right. It is time for us to dive on in into this whole concept of finding rest in our routines. I know for myself that I love the freedom that summer offers. Up here in North Idaho, we have sunshine from, say, 3.30 in the morning until almost 10 at night. And that's just because of the ambient light. And while that is really elongated for a period of time. It also shrinks down, as you know, in the middle of summer and it's so, or in the middle of winter and it's so painful. And so in summer, there can be a natural tendency for many of us, not just those of us who live up North, Northern dwellers who relish these, these, moments of sunshine. Um, But a lot of us, as we are um, transitioning and we're just enjoying all the luxuries that summer affords us, right? Um, we can find ourselves uh, struggling with our routines, which is why it's so important to revisit them. And this is a great natural opportunity for us to kind of decide who who gets to stay and who needs to go when it comes to our routines, because we can redefine, we can utilize this fall season as a time to do a little bit of housekeeping. And so the first thing, I have three points that three R's. Um, three keys, three R's, however you want to say it, that really are going to anchor us down in finding that rest in our routines. And the first one is that, hey, routines, they need to serve and support us, not enslave us. Yeah, this is the reality is that so often, especially highly motivated individuals, we can very much feel that we have to check that box. We have to say that we woke up and we did our morning routine and we did our workout as part of our routine and that we went through our day in a very strategic, specific way. And then we have great sleep hygiene because we have a sleep routine as well. And we have, we can bog ourselves down. And so we have to ensure, we talked about this before, Conscious Investor, that these routines, whatever we adopt, they are serving us, not enslaving us. For example, on Labor Day, um, I threw all routines aside. I didn't wake up early. I didn't read. I didn't even do my core. I could have done any of those things because I love to do those things. Those are things I genuinely love. But I also knew that the day after Labor Day, my kids were going back to school. And I knew that it was going to, like, that was not going to be optional, right? The wake up early and stick to the routine wasn't optional. And so it's really important as we are evaluating our routines understanding, is this routine serving me or enslaving me? And can I pause this routine for this day? And can I enjoy just a loungy, restful, slow morning about things? Because there's a different rhythm and cadence to life. And while I know a lot of highly motivated, high achievers want to say, we have to do this, and it's very regimented, and if we deviate from that, then the sky's going to fall unless we're on vacation. Some people even do routines on vacation. I'm just saying, I want to encourage you to say, what is really serving me? You know that over the last year and a half, I've very much been exploring this concept because I went from being extremely rigid with my routines and then I I was losing the joy. I was losing the freedom that we are striving to create and generate in our life. And so now that I'm finding this happy, happy middle ground with, oh, wait, I can take this day off and I can relax and enjoy. So for example, every Saturday, Saturdays are the only day of the week where I can have a super loungy morning. And I have found that inviting that into my life is very productive. It's very nourishing. It's, it disrupts the pattern, which is really helpful. It's also kind of oddly uncomfortable for me. So I want to encourage you to take a moment, evaluate what are my routines in my life? And if I don't have routines, maybe that is also robbing me of some of the rest that I need in my life. Because remember that as we have some structures in our life, it puts things on, put, puts things on 
autopilot, which allow us to just relax and be more focused in the moment. So routines are important, but we want to understand how that routine is serving us. All right. So there's a recap on the first R. Routines are great. They serve us, but we must be mindful and vigilant to revisit those routines and make sure that they are serving us. That then I'm going to say we have to invite some resistance into our life. Now, I've talked about resistance in the past as being um, we're facing resistance or friction and do we need to push through this? That's not the kind of resistance I'm talking about at this time. I'm talking about the internal strength to resist the shiny object, to resist the distractions, to resist the good things. In fact, this this is going to sound crazy to say. This could sound crazy, but I took a break in recording this podcast episode. I ran into the house because my my studio is detached. I ran into the house and sweet, like little miss, she ends up saying, hey, mom, will you? And she invited me into an opportunity. And typically, I would say yes. Typically, I will clear my schedule as much as humanly possible to say, absolutely, I'm there, I'm present, okay? My kids, that's what I strive to do with them because these young adults, they're not kids anymore, they're young adults. I I have a very short gap. And even when they were little, I did strive to do that. But I had to actually have, that was... Like, I have to resist this. And sometimes that's uncomfortable. Sometimes it doesn't feel super great. And I told her, I said, I'm so grateful for the invitation. Right now, I I must go and complete this particular task. Can I have a rain check? Okay, so even the very, it's like sometimes resistance can be very like, oh, this is hard. And guess what? She understands. And now I'm role modeling for her that um, I have some responsibilities that I need to tend to. And I love you. And, and I'm so grateful for this. And can we do this in just a little bit? So we are role modeling through our resistance um, and we are providing the opportunity for others to give themselves permission to stay in their zone, to stay in their flow and to say, oh, I don't need to take this personally. I don't have to have hurt feelings. I can understand that you are over in your flow. You're going to wrap that up and then we're going to have this time together. So resistance is absolutely critical in getting that traction that we need in our life. And so we want to say, hey, in my routines, am I taking on more than I need? Am I taking on another project? Am I saying yes to another lunch? Am I saying yes to coffee? Um, And so we have to know the difference to say, In this structure, in this flow of my day, in the flow of my week, in the flow of the month, the quarter, the year, how is my routine? How is my flow? A lot of times we're focused on our routines being a whole day and, oh, this is my daily routine, but we're not looking at the overarching greater um, flow and through line of all of our routines. So we want to make sure that we're saying, hey, where do these routines serve me? How are they enslaving me? And where do I need to resist this um, this opportunity and stick to my routine so that my routine serves me and I can reach, achieve, or exceed my goals. All right. Finally, this one really hits home for me, and that is having a routine and um, and finding rest. And we have to have reliance. Yeah, there's a pause there, conscious investor. And that is because I love self-sufficiency. I love personal freedom. I love being independent and self-reliant. You know, I love all of those things. And what can happen is that we can start to rely on ourselves so much that we encumber and burden ourselves. And it is over. Overwhelming. In fact, I wrote a little note here. I said, overwhelm is a sign we're relying on our own ability and we need to welcome support. 
We need to have a routine of nurturing and cultivating relationships so that we're not alone. We need to have a routine of inviting mentors, of um, choosing our friendships wisely, of saying and making our very best yes, and double downing on our reliance and dependence on God. That to me has been one of the biggest awakenings, reawakings, I should say, recently for me. You know that faith is central to my life. And, um, and so in this process over the last couple of months, I've noticed that I've had a lot of resistance, not the resistance that we were just talking about, but I've been facing a lot of friction. And I realized it was because I was becoming very self-reliant. I was putting everything on myself. Like, Julie, you have to take care of this. You must oversee this. You must be the person running point on this this mission. And I'm noticing that in that, and I've had a lot of beautiful opportunities along on my path. And in that process, again, I was putting it on my own shoulders. And in my morning routine, which serves, does not enslave me, right? Um, I've been having these conversations with God. I've been actually writing out these conversations are really interesting and reading through different scripture. By the way, I just read through the book of Daniel and it's so fascinating because it literally says multiple times, the moment you prayed, things started happening. And, and so I've been, God's been, God and I've been having these really great conversations. And in that conversation and in the teaching from some of the leaders at my church recently, I was, re- God reminded me very gently, very kindly, relax. I gave these opportunities to you for a greater purpose, and and you don't have to do this alone. You're not equipped to do this alone, and I think that's the the harder part. Even if even if you don't share my faith, right? I think that we can say that oftentimes we think that when an opportunity crosses our path, that we need to internalize it and do it ourselves, and it becomes overwhelming. Instead of saying. I can receive support from the outside. I can receive support from the sovereign. I can receive the support from these wonderful friends and mentors and business partners. I can receive that support so that this isn't just on my shoulders. So I want to encourage you that if that isn't a conversation that you maybe let me rephrase that. <laughs> um, I, I would put it this way, is that have that conversation. Have that inner dialogue and say, am I putting everything on myself? Am I unable to find the rest that I truly need because I am being so self-reliant? And do I need to revisit this? Do I need to look at my belief system? Do I need to look at, because man, I'm so great. I am just always so grateful for, for the support and help that the sovereign God puts into my life. Um, I feel like my time gets multiplied and my time is far more productive when I take time to, to pray and surrender and say, I, I'm reliant on your strength, not just my own. Um, look at the friendships that you're cultivating. Look at the mentors and the partners that you are inviting into your life and evaluate that because just like our routines serve or support, right? We want to make sure that the relationships in our life are also serving and supporting. We're not designed or equipped to do this on our own. Humans are created and hardwired for connection and for community and for collaboration. Even for those of us who are massively type A, we do need other people and it doesn't have to just be on our plate. <laughs> so I want to remind you, it's, it, maybe this stood out to you the way it stood out to me was, you know, when I wrote this down, I thought I have to share this with the conscious investor. Overwhelm is a sign we're relying on our own ability and we need to welcome support. Where can you welcome that support today?
I appreciate you, Conscious Investor. You know, this is really important as we are looking to create and cultivate rest. Go back, reflect on the routines. We're we're entering a new season, literally a new season of the year. It's a great time to reflect and say, what needs to stay and what needs to go? Double check, are my routines serving or enslaving me? Am I um, resisting the things that could be distractions from that one main thing that I know I need to pursue? And am I being self-reliant? Do I need to invite that outside support? And again, that red red flag indicator on that reliance part is if you are feeling overwhelmed, you are probably being self-reliant or you're probably not resisting something that needs to be resisted in your life. Thanks for listening, Conscious Investor. And until next time, live in the fullness of freedom. Real quick, I wanted to follow up and just let you know, Conscious Investor, that Passage of 2025 has started. And while it has started, there is still opportunity for you to come into Passage to 2025. And Passage to 2025 is your opportunity to walk through the next five months with a small cohort, cohort, sorry, of very intentional people. It maxes out at 12, and we have a really cozy amount of people in there right now. I love it. I absolutely love the space um, of it because it just creates an opportunity for more intimacy. Now, here's the, the great thing. You know integrity and being a person true to my, to my word, which is one of the four agreements, be impeccable with your word, is paramount and foundational in my life. I strive for that. I noticed that in an email, I sent two separate emails and one of them said, basically alluded to weekly meetings and one said once a month. So I want you to know that I'm deferring to the weekly meetings. And so those those who are part of Passage to 2025 are getting such an amazing opportunity. Oh my goodness. Um, I know that my coaching clients, um, you know, the coaching one-on-one coaching fees are so much, so much greater. And to think that you can have um, coaching and access to coaching twice a week for the next five months <laughs> and for a very nominal amount is just mind boggling to me. So I want to encourage you, if this is something that you were tinkering with, don't tinker with this anymore, especially now that we have this super value being added to it. Um, This is going to be a focus of mine. I'm really excited about pouring into Passage to 2025 attendees, and they're going to feel that, and I want you to feel that also. You don't want to enter into 2025, um, you know, behind the eight ball. You want to enter into 2025 with momentum. You want to have taken the time to reflect, to establish what routines am I taking for the next year? Um, and what are my massive goals? And how am I actually going to achieve that? We're going to enter 2025 with fun and excitement and energy and so much momentum. I'd love for you to be part of that. If you are interested in being part of that, please shoot me an email, julie at juliehawley.com. Just put in the subject line, passage to 2025, and I will send you the information personally. Until next time, again, live in the fullness of your freedom. 